We welcome all who come to worship with us this morning and pray that God will bless your fellowship with us. Do we have any announcements? Not seeing any, we will go to second prayer. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the love of God brings peace to our lives. The judgment of God brings peace to the world. Now, if you'll join me in the call to worship, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Let all God's children rejoice. Clap your hands and praise God with dancing. Shout for joy. Praise God with music. For God has given justice to the people. God brings judgment upon the powerful. Sing to the Lord a new song. Stand if you're able, and we'll sing. The faith we sing in him, two, 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 one.
You have an alarm clock? Do you have one? No? Your mom? No. <laughs> some alarm clocks, if you have one at home, some alarm clocks have something on them called a snooze button. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Ellie's <laughs> going, oh yeah, I know what a snooze button is. Snooze button is when the alarm goes off and you reach over and hit it and you roll over and do what? Fall back to sleep, right? Then it goes off again. Oh! Boom, second time. And they're about like 10 minutes apart. Snooze buttons can be bad for a couple of reasons. The first reason is, if you do that enough, you're gonna miss why you had your alarm set for the first place, like miss the school bus, or miss a test, or you're late for work, or something really important. You just keep doing it and end up sleeping past what you really need to get up for. The second reason it's not really, really good, this is what happens. You get so used to hearing the alarm that you don't even hear it anymore. Can you imagine that? Because my alarm's pretty obnoxious, you know? It's on my phone, it's just, it's obnoxious. And if I don't turn it off right away, it goes into automatic snooze mode. And then some people on their alarm clock, they get so used to it, they can't even hear their alarm, no matter when it goes off. Now, how does that have anything to do with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to tell you something. In Romans, this is what it says. It says, the hour has come for you to wake up. Because our salvation is nearer now than we have ever first believed. Wow. So what if Jesus was our alarm clock? And we just kept putting him on snooze. Not right now, Jesus. Call me later. Not right now, Jesus. Call me later. Or we don't even hear Jesus call us. Hmm. That could be terrible. That could be really bad. So what's our lesson in all this? That if you don't listen and react to the word of God in your life, you're going to miss out. And not just on a test or the school bus, you're going to miss out on eternal life. And that would be the worst tragedy of all. So what we have to do is we have to train ourselves to listen for the word of God in our lives. Those God moments where God is telling us what to do and how to act and how to believe and how to deal with other people. Those are the things that our alarm clock, Jesus, is telling us. And if we ignore it, we're going to miss the biggest boat ever. We're going to miss salvation. So I want you to think about it. Next time your alarm goes off, you wake up and say, good morning, God, instead of, God, it's morning. Got it? Okay, let us pray. Dear Father, when you sound the alarm telling us it's time to wake up and follow you, may we never be guilty of hitting the snooze alarm. Amen. Anybody have a birthday this last week? You had a birthday? Number on oh, you're a teenager now, aren't you? Thirteen? Yeah. And that's a big deal. So I have a treat for you. We'll get it for you after the service, okay? Take it down to the grocery store and get a, a goodie. That's kind of nice. So, well, happy birthday on the 2nd. I'll never forget that, remember, on the 2nd. And you guys have a great week at school. What grade are you in now? Eight. What grade are you in? Freshman year. <laughs> no. And how about you, Josh? Seventh grade. My hair is getting grayer as I talk to you. I tell you what. Well, guys, have a great year, okay? All right. There is Sandy here.
Might as well just take it back to the corner. I'll go. Scripture reading this morning is Romans 13, 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. How is it now at the moment that you wake from the sleep? A salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. Last Sunday, brothers and sisters in Christ, I have pointed out, pointed out in my sermon that all throughout the Gospel of Matthew, or even the Gospels, Jesus has been looking at reality in a different way than everyone else around him. This different way of looking at reality is Jesus' way of inviting his followers or inviting us today to an alternative existence that differs from the prevailing culture of their time and of our time. This different way of looking at reality reminds us that following Jesus being a faithful disciples of Jesus demands a new way of thinking. A way of thinking that goes against a conventional, cultural, approved thought forms. The mindset of the world. For those who claim to be Christians, those who have internalized this new way of looking at reality and identify them with them will have to deny themselves. Or the different way of looking at reality emphasizes the doing of God's will. Let us always remember that. Doing God's will and doing it no matter what the consequences are. Or in a world that is strongly opposed to God's will, those consequences including suffering and death, but also res resurrection. We are not to gradually endure this situation. We are to lean into it. This means taking up our cross, not having it put on them. We must be able to respond to this different way of looking at reality, the Jesus way. And proclaim to the whole world, I must go, not I will go. I must go. In our scripture this morning, Paul expanded the challenge and invitation and reminding the Christian community and followers of Jesus that we live in three advanced life that embody our Christian 
واحد
the first and second advent that is the question of faith how do we live our faith now until the final return of christ to earth church the first advent brought god into this world as the infant jesus or since the church lives in chronos time we make a point celebrating this Kairos event in a Kronos way on a particular day. We do that in the Christian calendar as our New Year. The first Sunday of Advent when we come to hear the promise of the birth, the coming of the Messiah. And then the second Advent is a far less chronological captured moment. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the second advent celebrates, celebrates Christ's continued presence in our lives, our churches, our homes, our communities, our world. Continued presence of Christ. We celebrate that in Christian calendar, what we call the Pentecost season. The coming of the Holy Spirit, that's the continued presence. In, of Christ in, in our lives, our churches, our homes, our communities, our world. That's why in today's text, text, Paul alludes to this ongoing presence when he declares how our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Verse 11. This is a strong reminder for us followers of Jesus today that the gift of the Holy Spirit given to all brings the power and presence of the divine into the everyday and each day to each one of us. And then we have the third anthem. It is the final transformation of all things and the culmination of the fullness of Christ in a new creation. We see the hopelessness and the brokenness of the world and we are privileged to hear from the gospel that that is not the end of everything. The end of everything is the promise of new heaven and new earth. This is the advent about which we can know the least, but for which we long the most. It is for this final or third advent the Maranatha Advent that we live according to the second Advent, the Christ birth in our life and the reality of the first Advent, the birth of Christ. Oh, that is why Paul, oh, that is why when you read and meditate on this part of the letter of Paul, you are invited to consider that today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Now is the time. Now is the time. This present moment now in which we live is like the dawn of a new day. Verse 14 says, Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we become believers. Church, salvation is a resurrection from the dead. Paul declares in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. So when you receive your gift of salvation, when you receive Christ, when you come to that moment when you offer your life, the fullness of your life, salvation becomes a gift of resurrection. Why? Before that, we are dead. 
as Paul said, the wages of sin is death. And in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and verses 46, Paul went on to say, you were dead through tra the trespasses and sins. But God who is rich in mercy, out of great love with which he loved us, and even we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And you come to verse 6. And raise us up with him. And seated us with him. In the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. And raise us up with him. And seated us with him. In the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ. By justification. By generation, regeneration, Christ gave us who are dead to sins a new life, a new birth that issued in eternal life. This death to sin and being made alive in Christ is represented by baptism, our baptism, as Paul explained in Romans chapter 6. Our baptism is an everyday reminder for us to the reality of a new birth, to that new way of looking at reality, to that new way of thinking, brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't ever think that your baptism will going to bring you in heaven, because it will not. Your baptism functions as a reminder for us, a representation of that reality that now we are not anymore dead unto sin, but we are resurrected from the dead because of the justification and the regeneration that Christ gave us. That new birth. So when you embody, when you live out the call of three advents, you come to verse 6 of Ephesians 6, chapter 2. And raise us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Church, this new life in Christ is the dawning of a new day. A person made a life in Christ who does not grasp the opportunity to live for Christ in a person who sleeps on after the day has done. That's why Ephesians 4, 5, 14, Paul proclaims, therefore it says, a sleeper, awake, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. The point Paul is making is clear. If you are exposed to Christ, if you are exposed to His presence, you become visible. For everything that becomes visible is a living and true witness to Jesus Christ. Our witness is always a witness to Jesus Christ. Oh, now is the time. Paul admonishes us in verse 12, put on the armor of light. This presence of Christ, this exposure to Christ is the impenetrable armor of light Paul counsels the Roman Christians to put on. When we clothe ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ, we wrap the second advent around our souls. We wrap ourselves in Christ's continued presence in our lives, our churches, our homes, our communities, our world. Or the armor of light represents the qualities of character with which Christians, followers of Christ, should equip ourselves to battle for Christ against evil. In Ephesians 6, Paul described the armor of a Christian witness or a Christian soldier as suggested by the Roman soldiers who was chained to Paul as he wrote. You can read that in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 
to 20. Oh, I love Paul's image of wrapping ourselves in this armor or garment of light. Have you ever noticed how when a degree is conferred on someone who is entering a profession, there is some sort of a special garment that accompanies the new designation? The garment, brothers and sisters in Christ, signifies that the person wearing it is armored to fight evil in the world. A medical doctor is guarded with a full length white coat. It is while wearing this garment that the doctor wages war against disease and injury. The newly robed PhD wears the colors and stripes that declare war on ignorance and challenge this color to a life devoted to continued learning. A police officer or firefighter gets to wear a uniform that battles the malevolent forces of our community. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to witness Christ's continued presence in, the, in this broken world. We must showcase that the gift of the Holy Spirit given to all brings the power and presence of the divine into the everyday and, and each day. We must also issue an invitation to the people around us to be exposed in the light and presence of Christ so that they too can put on the armor of light. Remember, our witness is not our witness to what we can be. Our witness is a witness to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now is the time. And then Paul went on to say in verse 13, to live honorably as in the day as in the day in verse 13, to live honorably as in the day. Now, the way Christian ought to live has been depicted as putting on new clothes and as putting on the armor of light and engaging in the battle of Christ's side against Satan. We are called to live honorably as in the day. A Christian life, a Christian life is open in the day for all to see. Christians are called by Paul to live decently as in any daytime. Or oh, our behavior should be stamped up to the scrutiny of both the bright, broad daylight of the world and to the standards of life lived in the light of the approaching day of the Lord. That's why Paul said, live honorably as in the day. Live honorably. The other versions of the scripture use the word to walk. You know what walk means in the Bible, especially in, in line with the Pauline theology, walk means to contaminate yourself, to poison yourself with the things of God. That is how we live honorably as in the day. Brothers and sisters in Christ, live honorably. And finally, Paul declares in verse 14, Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desire. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. The illustration seems to be this, the old evil deeds of person's life before he or she became a Christian are like old clothes that need to be discarded. As an ancient wrapped his robe about him, believers or followers of Christ are to enfold ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ at all times. Oh, 
Why is it necessary for us to change clothes? God has put that human dynamics in each one of us. To have an experience of what is to be completed by God, by Jesus. Because the change of clothes need to be complete. It means all areas of life, politics, economics, religious, cultural, societal, spiritual, physical, mindset, emotion, all and no exception. Hear ye, hear ye, O Israel, love the Lord your God with all. With all. None of the old filthy clothes of an unsaved person will look good on who is saved. Do not think about how to gratify all seven. The desires of the flesh. The truth is, anyone who expects to live the Christian life with only partial allegiance to Jesus Christ is in trouble. That's why I believe, I strongly believe in my heart that the Christian church, that the United Methodist Church in this time and in this culture is in great, great trouble. Because now we have seen the witness of our leaders that they are more inclined to give their loyalty to the laws crafted by human beings than the voice and instructions of our Lord. Anyone who expects to live the Christian life with only partial allegiance to Christ is in trouble and is always in trouble. That person is as ridiculous as one dressed partly in good clothes and partly in dirty clothes. The truth is, Jesus must be Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all. But when you put the Lord Jesus Christ, when you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are invited and called to take a new character, the character of Christ, which enables us to live in light while yet surrounded by dark deeds and evil intentions. It is a calling to faithfulness. Now as faithfulness is lived out each day, it is by continually putting on Christ that brings light into each day, no matter how darkness presses up and oppresses them. Now is the time, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are not preparing to live. We are living now. The dawn has come. The day of opportunity is now. If you are just but preparing your life in order for you to go to heaven, you miss the point of Paul and you miss the point of Jesus. We are not preparing to live brothers and sisters in Christ. We are living now. The dawn has come. The day of opportunity is now. You cannot propel yourselves into heaven by just preparing to live. You have to live now. Because that is, now is the day of opportunity. So my question to you brothers and sisters this morning will be, are you living all three Advents life? Are you celebrating the first Advent, the birth of Christ? Are you living the second Advent, the Christ birth in you? Are you praying for the third Advent, the coming new creation, in which we are summoned not just to prepare for, but to participate in it? Are you living the now of your salvation and resurrection? Battling the forces of evil and injustice and wickedness in our world. My wife always remind me because she has this sense that I am as if living, as if it is my last day. And I always 
tell them. When you turn 55, you will realize that. When you feel the pain in your muscles and in your bones. But the reality is, we live not knowing what will happen the next day. Especially when you go to sleep, the only hope about that is that we have a God that doesn't slumber. He watches over us. And in order for me to enjoy life is that I always live in now in the context of what I have come to know, the reality that Christ was born and the gift of that continued presence that Christ was born in me, in my everyday life. And then the hope, the indestructible hope of the gift of Christ fulfilling everything that he has promised. And because of that, God has empowered me to battle the forces of evil and injustice and wickedness in my life and around me. Church, now is the time. Now is the time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. We're not going to have anyone have a joy or concern. We have joys, we have um, uh, brothers and sisters celebrating their uh, birthdays uh, this week and the week to come. Uh, if you notice, we did put their names and their birthday. Uh, I have received some warnings. Uh, Reminding me that if possible, we should not be publishing names and birthdays and even wedding anniversaries. Uh, we have uh, a lot of scam going on and we would like to protect each one of us. So for those celebrating their birthdays, we would like to, to uh, give these greetings to you and we are hoping that uh, and praying that God will be going to continue to shape and nurture your life so that you become not just a blessing to this community, but you become a blessing to all, in particular the people around you. Pastor Ayers of uh, Peace Church, um, the, the surgery was moved not up to, not on September 8th, that was moved again. Uh, he will going to have his surgery on September 22. So uh, uh, we, we continue to pray for him, uh, pray that uh, God will going to continue to give him strength. Also, um, Nancy is announcing to us that uh, uh, for, the mean, for the meantime, until we figure out what we need to do, is that we will not going to have an in-person uh, Sunday school. Uh, uh, she will be preparing materials that we will be sending out to all parents. Um, and then uh, we take it from there. Uh, we We'll follow whatever developments that will going to take place, uh, and when we are, we have the clearance to uh, have the comfort of in-person Sunday school. We will make that announcement to our parents and to our Sunday school kids. Uh, so, these are some of the few 
uh, announcements that we have and if you would like to have more uh, I think they are listed in our uh, newsletter and in our point any other prayer requests that you would like to lift up at this time before we offer our prayer to the Lord I would like to invite you now to join me in this prayer oh god you have chosen to speak through the mouths of your servants the prophets the apostles your priests and religious leaders whom you've raised up by them your word and instructions and your will has become known father god the heavens shake with the roar of thunder but you are not in the claps that are heard the skies are lighted with the bolts of lightning but you are not in the arcs that are seen the air is filled with the pillars of billowing smoke but you are not found in 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 their destiny father no you are known by the voices of those whom you have sent to serve you, who speak with the authority you give them. And we are grateful for the call of Brother Paul, Apostle Paul, for the words that we heard from him this morning. Help us to take it to the heart, Father, enlighten our minds so that in our everyday life this invitation of true Athens will be embodied in our existence father we give thanks for all those who have faithfully studied your words who through years have made known your will you summoned moses and aaron and many more you summoned them to the top of the mountain and unto them you deliver the law we give thanks for the prophets and poets for the people of vision and the voices of praise they were not afraid to take heed of your judgment and they did not shrink from giving you the glory which you are due we give thanks for those who have taught us the mothers and fathers sisters and brothers teachers and leaders who have come before us we stand on their shoulders for a glimpse of your way. In Christ, Father God, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. It is in his name you call us to walk, to live honorably. We now seek to be faithful for his sake as you enlist us to serve you in the decisions we make. We pray on behalf of those in authority for leaders and representatives we have chosen to rule. Like our elected officials, like the people we give authority to lead the pillars of our government. Those leaders that are leading our churches, Father God, the bishops, our district superintendents help us father to have the boldness when they are not faithful we will go in to challenge them when they lead us astray and distort the teaching of jesus give us the courage and the boldness to tell the truth help us to live honorably help us to put on the armor of christ to clothe ourselves in the Lord Jesus so that we have this gift of discernment so that when our religious leaders our church leaders will become unfaithful we have the boldness to speak the truth so we pray Father God that you give them proper standards for judgment and a measure of wisdom in the choices they make. 
make their voices credible as they speak on behalf of the people, make the rulings in accord with what you have commanded. You have entrusted us the care of the whole world, the care of creation. You have given us this enormous task of being good stewards, Father God. And sometimes we see in our leaders, our political leaders and even our church leaders, unfaithfulness as to this ministry of stewardship of creation. So we pray, Father God, help them and help us in Christ's name to discern your word for our day. Help us then also, Father, to experience the power of your healing miracle, especially those dear and near to our hearts. We have some of them listed in our prayer corner, Father God. We pray for Sister Caroline, who just had a surgery. Last Thursday, Father God. We continue to pray for Brother Clark, for Sister Ken. We continue to pray for the recovery of Sister Kay Loy. And we are glad to see her today, Father God. We continue to pray for Sister Tawana, for Brother Dwight and Joa. And for Brother Dwight for knowing that he just had his last radiation, Father God. And soon he will finish his chemotherapy. We lift up his spirit, Father God, at this time. We also praise God to see Sister Doyan here today. We continue to pray for her full whole family, Father God. Pray for comfort and hope. We pray for Brother Chuck and Sister Nerone. We pray for your servant's family, Father God. We pray for Brother Paul, for the young boy Lane, and we pray for Brother Corner and the whole Gethman family. We pray for strength for Kathy, who continues to be the bridge of your healing to Corner. We pray for Sister Madeline, for Sister Kelly, for Brother Bob, for Sister Priscilla, for Brother Al and Janelle, for Craig me, Father God, for my Uncle Domingo, for Sister Melba, for Quintin, for Cindy, and for George and Galene, for Emily, for Dawn, and for Brother Lee, for Pastor Ayers and Pastor White, Father God. We pray for those whose name we cannot live up unto you, Father God. They are our friends. They are our neighbors. They are near to us. We lift them up unto you that they may also receive their share of your miracle, miracle healing. We pray for anyone touched by the COVID-19. We pray for our military, for our firemen, and for, my, for our policemen and, and police women, Father God. We pray that you give them strength and courage to fulfill their oath of duty in this turbulent time. We pray, Father God, for all the people of your church, the leaders, the missionaries, the, the volunteers, we pray for them, Father God. May they continue to put on the armor of life and put on our Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray for the people who are here this morning. I pray that you will go in to bless them enormously, that the gift of abundant life will be upon them. And as they go out from this place, they carry with them not just the promise of the first advent, not just the gift of the second advent, but also the promise of that indestructible hope that Christ will come again to fulfill and to consummate the promise of the kingdom of God in our midst. 
We pray for those unspoken concerns, Father God. Those bit of desires and, and longings, Father God. And I pray that they may continue to witness to our faithfulness, to our intentions of and willingness to follow your will, no matter what the consequences are, Father God. And we would like to say thank you, Father, for this gift of worship. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen and Amen. Now for our final hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 196, stand at the river. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen.